If you have computer chips under the hood of your car the way this 89 Corvette does, all you have to do is plug it into one of these diagnostic machines and you can see exactly what is going on inside the engine. Well, it should be true then of your PC because after all, there's nothing but computer chips under the hood of that. Well, it is true if you have the right diagnostic tools. Today, we'll take a look at diagnostic software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. In the early days of personal computers, if you wanted to find out what was going on inside your PC, we had limited tools available. For example, you could use a DOS command like check disk and get a little bit of information here about what's on our hard drive and where our memory is sitting at the moment. But then Peter Norton came along with the Norton Utilities and we could do a little bit more with a Norton command like sysinfo. We get some more information. Here's a basic system summary, and we could go deeper about our video situation, the hardware interrupts, the software interrupts, something about the CMOS values, more information about the way our disk is configured, partition tables even, a memory summary, and so on. But as today's computers get even more powerful and more complicated, and as software starts demanding more and more of our computers, we need even more powerful tools to look inside the PC to know what's going on, especially if there's a problem. Now, you can do a lot yourself these days with the diagnostic software we'll be looking at, but even if you can't fix it yourself, diagnostic software may help you explain to the repair shop what's wrong, and that can save you money. Advanced Computer Repair. When you have a problem with your computer, you want it fixed right away. Here at Advanced Computer Repair in San Francisco, the labor cost alone for computer repair is $71 an hour. At that price, you want them to fix the computer, not spend a lot of time figuring out what's wrong. One way to do that is to use diagnostic software on your computer before taking it to the repair shop. Diagnostic software can help the user in determining what the problems actually are. Uh, one of the jobs that, that we have to do is kind of be mind readers and find out what actually went wrong. Uh, if you go to the doctor and you can't describe what the symptoms are, he's not going to be able to know what problem you have. So by doing that, you make our job easier because we know what to look for. Even if you can't diagnose the problem yourself, you can still save money by using diagnostic utilities to do your own hard drive backup before taking your computer into the shop. Users can use diagnostic software to find bad spots on their hard disk. A lot of times their repair charges will be much higher if we have to do data recovery on a hard disk uh, rather than having them have backups in advance because they knew that their hard disk was, was on the way out. A difference in the cost could be as much as $2,500. Diagnostic software not only cuts the cost of computer repairs, but in many cases, eliminates them altogether. I would say about 20% of the problems that we see are problems that the users could have solved or eliminated by running some diagnostic software periodically before they come to us. Um, lately, a lot of viruses cause problems such as printers not printing, uh, floppy drives not working, and these are the kind of problems that they can solve on their own without having to call us. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Stelson. Most diagnostic software has been developed for the PC platform, and that's where we'll begin today with diagnostic products that help solve the mysteries of Windows and the black hole of upper memory. Here to show us are Frank Westall of Dariana and Gary Saxer of Quarterdeck. Gary, let me begin with you. I've been turning on computers for a long time and is always running memory checks and checking this, and it's always right. I mean, who has to worry about this kind of software? I mean, the average user, is this just for a hacker to play around with? No, it's for everybody. Stuart, there are only two kinds of computer users in the world, novices 
and experts. <laughs> no middle class. I don't really think so. Okay. You're, you either just use the machine or you start getting yeah, into yeah. it and you find out everything. And so you need to know about this incredibly important stuff that's going on well, inside the machine. Certainly when it comes to memory, that's for sure. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to get back to you in a minute. Now, Windows sort of raises the ante even more, Frank, because people are running under Windows now, and who knows what in the world is going on when you're loading up your Windows program. You have WinSleuth, which helps us understand what's going on there. Show us how you would use WinSleuth. Well, actually, again, you have additional problems within the Windows environment because what you have to do is the user not only wants to learn about um, what's going on within Windows, but they also want to learn about what's going on within our hardware. Right. So a representation of the system comes up, and you can take the cursor and you can point it as an example towards the hard drive. Hard drive information comes up on the system, and we have over 52 buttons explaining what we've got, or we have drop-down menus. Uh -huh. As an example, we can go down and do motherboard testing on the system. We can do something along the lines of testing your parallel and serial ports. Mm -hmm. The other areas you can get into are such areas such as looking at memory. You can look at the conventional memory, and then you can break that out, put it into a smaller window, and continue on. You can look within the Windows environment at issues such as task list. Within the task list, what happens is these are areas that are open, applications that are open. As an example, let me give you something here. I can go in, bring this down, open up something like the calculator. Mm -hmm. I'll minimize it. And you'll see within every five seconds, this task list updates itself. And the reason for this type of yeah, application... So is monitoring what's really Exactly. Running. A lot yeah. of users will turn around and they'll open up 5, 10, 15 applications. Exactly. Forget to close them out. Two weeks later, they keep using the same type of procedure. They run out of memory, run down by two more <laughs> megabytes of memory, right. and they're in a lot of trouble there. And this tells you why that's happening. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, the other areas that you can look into within the operating system environment Windows is not the perfect environment. People use DOS applications as well as Windows. Right. They want to look at issues such as device drivers. If they have video cards, they yeah. have the device drivers on the video cards as well as on Windows types of cards. Within that, that area, as an example on video cards, if they want to do something like installing a new board, yeah, so how they can go in there, that nightmare? use something like Installation Assistant. Users. Most users don't know what an IRQ is, yeah, what an I.O. Yeah, port is. Right, right. All they do is they read the manual that says you have to use certain IRQ location or certain I.O. port location. Well, guess what? They've already got five cards inside right. of there. The only thing they can do is call up the vendor or take out all the boards one at a time. Uh -huh. When they call the vendor, the vendor is going to want to know what they've got in the system. With this installation assistant, they, the green area is areas that are available. The blue yeah. areas of the areas within the hardware interrupts that they've got access to. Now, also what it'll do is give you a slight explanation, and you can go over to Help, Help on Data Display, and you can find yeah. out what the ROM address is. And it's an educational issue for you as well. Sure. So this type of thing is really beneficial to the user, both from a diagnostic point of view as well as from an um, educational point of view. And can you sort of use WinSleuth to fine-tune your installation of Windows to exactly. maximize it? Tune-up is a function that users tend to think that coming from the DOS environment, now with 3.1 coming yeah. out, there's millions of new users coming into the fold. Users think that they can load the program just like they can DOS. Well, no. it, again, it's not a perfect world. What will happen in a case like this is if you run TuneUp afterwards, you can turn around and it makes recommendations as to what is wrong with your system. Mm -hmm. You can take those recommendations and turn around and reconfigure the system properly, and it tells you what to do. That's great. Okay, Gary, let's turn to you, and memory is one of the big nightmares in trying to figure out what sure. is going on inside your, your computer, and at Quarter Deck, that's what you guys specialize in. And tell me how you can help me figure out what's happening. Well, we're using our product Manifest here to help us look at our classically DOS, classic DOS-based yeah. applications, and it also helps Windows-based applications as well. Taking a look at Manifest screen here, for instance, you see there where it says conventional memory ends at 640K, right about right. in the middle. Just above it, it says 5 533K. Yeah. That's how much memory I have. Now, all of us thought we had 640K, right. but you don't have, so you only have 533. Go? Well, all these little programs are loaded in there. I actually have a network driver here, a mouse yeah. driver, um, some other special things. In fact, there's also, let's say, a disk cache and an right. ANSI sys driver and stuff like so that. You try to load that software, it's not enough memory, and you say, What do you mean, not what enough memory? What do you mean? Memory? I got all kinds <laughs> of it, but you need right. it below 640K, and there's lots of other yeah. stuff in there. Okay. Now, what we, what we can also do, however, is there are areas between 640K and 1024K. This is a particular picture of those areas. The letter H's are areas above 640K that aren't being used by anything, uh -huh. and we can put some programs in there and the areas with the letter R especially down there across the bottom yeah. where the system ROM is those are areas that you simply can't use 
Now, the problem is that what we want to be able to do is put together what we're loading between uh -huh. 640K and 1024K, all right, and make it work right. Now, what okay. I'm about to do is reboot the machine here, and I'm running this program called Optimize, and what Optimize does is it takes all your programs, the network drivers, the mouse drivers, mm -hmm. and each of these other programs, and it finds each of the areas between 640K and 1024K, and Optimize figures out where between 640K and 1024K each of these programs should be going. Huh. So therefore, you don't have to do it. You know, DOS 5 simply tells you, give it a try. Yeah, right. Try loading that stuff up there and see if it works. That's silly. As you're, as you're going to see here in just a moment, because Optimize yeah. has figured out 500,000, wow. yeah. as that's the number yeah, in the bottom yeah. right-hand corner, different combinations for putting programs in. Now, interestingly enough, there are other things that you could do to make this stuff work even uh -huh. better. What I'm going to use is a feature called Stealth. Now, stealth gives us the capability of being able to actually take these pro take the areas that we were called ROMs right. and take the ROM areas and get rid of them. And instead of then having only a couple of little tiny areas between 640K and 1024K mm -hmm. in which to put these resident programs, we have huge areas. As a matter of fact, the ROMs are gone completely when you use the stealth feature. The net result of this is all these little programs that you have below 640K, you now have the capability of getting all of them above 640K. And regaining all that room. And regaining all that memory below uh -huh. 640K. In uh -huh. fact, as we, uh, there's one of these drivers takes 96K of memory. We can uh -huh. see here on this little um, screen here. Down there right, at the bottom, right. the mirror, mirror program takes 96K right. of memory, but it only takes 6K when it's resident. It needs a huge amount of memory between 640K so you've and 1024K. So you wasting that memory. Well, you it, well right? you're not wasting it. Uh, that's, that, that's one of the things, see, this analysis is showing you yeah. here, that you're not wasting it. Here, I'm going to reboot for okay. the final time yeah. here. What's, what's, what, you're not wasting it. What you're doing is you have to use so much, mm -hmm. and then it squashes down when it's done. You see, without an analysis tool, you Wouldn't don't know that, that that's exactly. taking place. Yeah. And that's why people say, I got so much memory, why can't Where I is use it? it? <laughs> because it's using memory that you don't realize and yeah. then yeah. unusing it or, or getting rid of okay. it after it's okay. all done. Now, Optimize is all done now, and as we can see here, looking at the same display we looked at originally, we have wow. 621K so we of memory. So we just gained bill. 90K or so gained from that 90K process. Gained 90K of memory. Yeah. And all the ROMs are gone. gone. Yeah. You can see there's no more letter R's. Hmm. So Manifest shows us what's going on, and Optimize, which is a feature of QEMM 3D6 and our right, product called right, Cram, right. actually help to make it so that you can use those areas as best as possible. All right, gentlemen, two great diagnostic tools. Thank you very much, Frank and Gary. Now, when a hardware vendor gives you its free tech support line, it would like some help from you, the user. To make that happen, many computer manufacturers are now bundling diagnostic software with their PCs. Acer Computers produces one PC every 15 seconds. That's about 10,000 units a week, so there are lots of Acer users out there who might want to call the Acer Tech support line. The company wants to provide users with support, but in an era of tight margins for PC makers, it can't afford the high cost of personal service for every user. Acer's answer was bundling diagnostic software free of charge with each PC. In the case of including a diagnostic diskette or more sophisticated software in the firmware, that may increase the cost of the computer by two to five dollars. However, when you factor in the support costs of a computer over one, two, or even up to a five-year period, I think conservatively the time and the expense involved from taking a service call may be on the order of $20. So as a result, it is in the best interest of the manufacturer long-term to provide this level of investment to support the customer. The Acer software was written in-house and helps the user test various components within the computer. The diagnostic software makes it easier for the Acer technicians to solve your problem and in many cases it can save you from having to make the call at all. In terms of the number of phone inquiries that we received as we started including the, the diagnostic diskette with the computers, we have seen a reduction of anywhere from one-third to one-half on the number of service inquiries. Additionally, we find that for those that we do receive, they are much uh, the higher level of qualified inquiries so that it reduces the amount of time and effort that our service personnel need to work and support that kind of an inquiry. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Stelson.
Macintosh diagnostics used to be pretty simple, but with all the new goodies built into the newer and more powerful Macs, there is a growing market for peeking inside your Macintosh, too. Here to show us two Mac diagnostic programs are Jeff Bodine of Micromat, and also with us Brent Luckman, president of Maxa. Brent, you guys used to specialize in PC diagnostic tools, and now you are coming out with your first Mac diagnostic software. What's happening here? Is it getting just as complicated to figure out what's happening inside a Mac as it is in a DOS machine? Absolutely, absolutely. We took a look at it, and around six months ago, after having a quest for two years, determined that with the FX, the Quadras, and the PowerBooks, that yeah. there was a definite need based on accelerator cards, ex extended video. We really need to come up with a tool that would help users and corporations really take full advantage of what's going on in these machines to quickly locate nice yeah. the problems. So the PC gets Windows and the Mac gets more complicated than the diagnostic tools. Absolutely. All right, now you have a product called Mac EKG, Correct. Jeff, and what does that let me find out about what's happening inside my Mac? Mac EKG is a CDEV, which is much like an init or extension, mm -hmm. TSR in the IBM world. And what it does is it essentially learns the way the user's machine normally behaves. That uh -huh. way, should something odd occur, something which slows down the system perhaps, uh, the program will come up Performing and tell you. System diagnostics. Uh, it runs through a series of logic tests, that's what it's doing right now. And uh, while it's doing that, it shows you quite a bit of information about your machine. So you're loading in EKG after everything else is in. After and everything EKG else is runs. going in and looking and figuring out what's going on. Correct. Okay. Correct. So what's it telling me? Right now it's uh, timing the logic functions. And right here, I'm going to pause it. Uh, it's testing the parameter RAM, which is the storage area uh, mm -hmm. that stores the information after the machine turns off. It uh, tests that particular chip and, of course, displays that information. Okay. Um, after it does the parameter RAM test, it runs through a RAM test of uh, all the memory, and uh, then it tests the VIA chip, mm -hmm. which is the versatile interface adapter that allows it the communication with the keyboard, and then it should test the SCC, uh -huh. which is a serial communication controller chip, allows modem, printer work, and then the actual SCSI chip, which interfaces right. to the SCSI disk drives. Uh, the next step of the test, it's going to test the actual media hooked up to the drive. It'll test each drive on the bus, mm -hmm. show you a lot of information about it, and uh, learn the way that particular drive should behave. All systems nominal. When it's complete, it uh, gives you a histogram. <clears throat> and had we found any problems, it would have told us right uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. There's a problem here. Take a look into it. Okay, now what else could we do with this then? I mean, would I use this just routinely to check my computer each day or, or to, f to uh, troubleshoot a problem? As a, as a power user, that'd be uh, the, the way to use it, is to, to run it once a day, maybe a couple of times a day, or even just once a week. We have several settings for that. For the service technician, it allows them to test chips previously only testable by a piece uh -huh. of Apple software called uh, uh, Mac Test, right, right. which was unavailable to the uh, regular public, just authorized Apple dealers. So it gives you a way to test the uh, low-down chips on the logic board. Right. Okay, now if I'm just an average user, I, I run EKG once a day or once a week or something, and I see there's a problem, what do I do then? Well, the uh, best thing to do is it's actually probably going to come up and tell you there is a problem. Uh -huh. the, the biggest culprit we find having a, a service shop that repairs Macintosh is that people are often the culprit of their own machine. They put something in the system folder which right, causes they messed troubles. It up themselves, yeah. Next time they restart, if EKG sees a, a, a failure or a drop in performance, it will come up you and tell you. You messed me up, it'll say. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, it will tell you there is something wrong and to look yeah. into it and just by deduction you'll yeah. know, well, I did this yesterday, perhaps that's why. All right, Brent, you have a hardware and software diagnostic tool for the Mac. Explain that to me. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, what we've done is we've provided uh, for the users um, a diagnostic card that will assist users in finding the problem even if a sad Mac does come up on the screen. Uh -huh. As you're aware, uh, software diagnostics make an awful right. lot of assumptions that monitors, video, disk drives, RAM and everything have to be mm -hmm. perfectly functioning. So what we did was we created this board for new bus machines yeah. to introduce some standardization since the other previous Macs had all sorts of different structures for expansion slots. And that board really has its own readouts right on it, huh? Absolutely, and it's very, very easy to so use. what's that telling me? So what it's going to tell the user is, number one, is their power supply uh, voltage is going to each yeah. line. It tells the clock, any bus activity, and looks for ADB as well. And uh -huh. this will actually tell a user, hey, I've got a problem. It's more serious than I can handle. I need a new supply. I've got a bus problem. Get it back to my dealer. Uh -huh. Get it back uh -huh. to the shop or one of the distributors that are now carrying the product, right. Apple product line. All right, and I see you have a, a Terminator plug of some sort there. What do you do with that? Yes, with uh, our program, we supply uh, Terminator plugs for both 
the serial and the modem ports. Uh -huh. And this is to ensure integrity and that those ports are functioning properly. We've installed one here on the back of our uh, uh -huh. machine here to show that, you, that it fails and yeah. can fail. And this is very important. We really test uh, the hardware on individual unit tests as well as automatic testing. Right. And uh, we've really broken our program, and maybe we should take a yeah, look at it. Yeah, let's take a look at the software part okay, of it, Brent. Okay, good. Okay, so you're going to fire up Snooper. Snooper starts off with uh, uh, an automated screen. It's known in the DOS world as a go, no go menu. And what mm -hmm. it does, it automatically tests the key areas of functionality where the, a failure could occur. And this is really good because when we surveyed users, we found that they didn't really want to sit around and play with pull down menus. Yeah, yeah. But uh, for doing that, we also then provided some exhaustive tests, which we'll look at in a minute. What we've got is a dialog box at the bottom that tells them the status. And we also record the pass control, or number of times a device may have failed. Mm -hmm. If something does fail on here, it'll give them, uh, say, bad. It'll fill in the box, and it'll be recorded. He'll then go to the manual, and it'll tell the user what he needs to do. Right, so it's showing me sequentially, just running through each of these tests one at a time here. Exactly. As you can see, the modem port failed, and we have the, the loopback terminator is removed right now. Uh-huh. Okay? So this can go on for some time. So right. why don't I take a look? We've divided the program into testing, mm -hmm. system information, which is defined as helping a user or a technician uh, determine what's installed in the machine and where it's located. Mm -hmm. And we look at CPU, ADB info, new bus info, SCSI bus info, and complete information. What's installed in the machine and where it's basically located. And uh, with that, we now have a report that can be generated for corporations to keep an inventory of all of their equipment and where things are located. And exactly what's inside the machine. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's been very valuable for some mm -hmm. of the major corporates we've done business with. Then we look at benchmarking. And in benchmarking, we are looking at now, we're comparing basically for a user to determine the price performance ratio of why he would buy one machine uh -huh. with one accelerator with a particular video card. So it's a purchasing decision for corporations yeah. and end users. Show me for example. I'll take, you, take a look here at a video test just uh -huh. to give you an idea. And we're comparing here video speed of the CI against a, a Quadra 900. And uh, as you can see, I think my designers went a little crazy <laughs> on this one. Okay, they're running a pretty complicated video test here. Yeah, it's great. And so the machine is measuring the performance of my machine and comparing it to what it would be like if I had a Quadra. That's correct. So it's 41%. Okay. Okay. So that'll give you an idea what we're, we're doing. Okay. Here. What else can we do then? With so Super? we've got uh, disk testing. We do uh, select the device. We do what's called a quick test. We do exhaustive testing, seek segmentation. Mm -hmm. A big uh, complaint of a lot of users is termination. Yeah. What's out there on the SCSI bus? What's happening? Right. Is it free and clear? We do memory testing. We do basic <laughs> pattern testing. And this is a way of determining uh, which SIM module is defective. We give, for an example, we'll do a walking ones test, and we'll indicate here and show clearly an address that's bad or if it's defective. The user goes to his manual, looks up the type of CPU and machine he has, and knows which SIM module it needs uh -huh. to be replaced. Okay. We do video testing more, again, for the screen. We do things like pin cushion testing, looking at any corners or mm -hmm. anything that could be out on the monitor, convergence testing. Okay. Right. And uh, a whole sequence, we do all sorts of, you know, color bed, right. color wheels, mm. just to give the user an idea that everything is working functionally and up to snuff. And then here on test, we do battery testing, the PRAM, we do individual port testing, we test the real time clock. We also Even do audio testing, audio testing uh -huh. here. Okay. The audio is functioning correctly. I guess okay. so. <laughs> Gotta have it. And then we, we provide uh, the user also with complete test information. A real sum summary or a histogram, yeah. as Jeff referred to it earlier, of everything that's gone on for the technician or the the uh, corporation as a status report. That's great. You can really look in. You can snoop inside your Mac. Snoop I guess, inside huh? or take it. its EKG, whatever you want to do. All right, you guys were great. Thank you very much. That's our look at diagnostic software. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, this is a special summer edition with a focus on software. Here are last week's best-selling software titles for the PC according to PC Connection. Microsoft's MS-DOS 5.0 upgrade occupies the number one position. Rounding out the top ten are Stacker 2.0 from Stack Electronics and Berkeley Systems After Dark for Windows. Next up, Paul Schindler and our summer software review. 
You know, I can never get my paper schedule just the way I want it. And as for my three-digit to-do list, forget it. But with Datebook, you have a fighting chance to get organized. Now, each day you can look at either your to-do list, the items carry forward if not completed, or your events for the day. View the day's events as text, a Gantt chart, or a time bar. The week view looks a lot like paper calendars, and in fact, you can print it out to fit the popular day timer or Filofax formats. A unique feature of this datebook is the busyness indicator. Divide your workday into any three periods you choose, and the calendar shows you, at a glance, with green, yellow, or red bars, whether you are free, slightly busy, or totally crunched. For most of us, the week starts on Monday. In Datebook, the week starts when you say it does. You can use a banner to indicate multi-day events. Datebook comes with a variety of icons which you can use to mark specific types of events. Datebook is $125 from After Hours Software in Van Nuys, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1-800-366-9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use. 